Good morning, everyone. How about a hand for our Seaside band? The guys from Seaside. There are people signing up out there at Gourmets for Gods on a waiting list waiting to get into this band. That's how good they are. This is, this is the band. All right. Some announcements, some things that are going on today right after church, right after service. And there are three of them. Sure. I'm sorry. Thank you. This is my first time, so bear with me. Holding the light, setting the, the tone for the service, our practitioner, Robin Mitchell, former board member. And as a reminder for those of you who need prayer, the practitioners are available back in the prayer corner for you for that special prayer and that special acknowledgement. Okay, for we've got the youth and family planning meeting with Reverend Lori Sheets right after the service at 12 o'clock. So those of you who want to get involved in that, please go see her. She needs volunteers. We need help in that particular department. Seaside Sages meeting in the Emerson Room at 12.30. Sages are open to any members 50 years or above, but today is a very special meeting. Uh, Sydney Salt is going to be coming in, and she communicates with those who are on the other side. So if those of you who want more information about that or have someone that you want to talk to, listen to what uh, Reverend Tillotson has to say and come and, and share that with us. The Seaside Singles Brunch at Coco's and Encinitas. How many singles we got? How many people we got going to the brunch? You can't, you're going to be singles all your life if you don't go to the singles brunch. Okay? You're going to be singles. You got to go to the singles brunch and then you can come to the couples brunch. All right? So think about it. Anyway, that's at the Seaside Singles Brunch at Coco's in Encinitas. And there's a, a table outside to sign up and get information. Okay. Lots of classes coming up. Reverend Christian is talking about Reverend Christian is talking about choice today and lots of choices, lots of way to grow in science of mind. We got two classes coming up. The first is Reverend uh, Roots of Science of Mind with Reverend Kathleen Economou, who's head of the Holmes Institute, and and that's at 6:30 to 9:30, and it begins June 18th for 10 weeks. So it is a commitment, but it's a wonderful way to learn about science of mind. Financial Freedom with Reverend Laurie Sheets. That bling begins on June 17th, that's eight weeks, and that's also a three-hour class on Mondays from 6.30 to 9.30. So if you want to continue on in your education and learning about science of mind, how it helps you in your daily life, how it helps you in your financial, how it helps you in everything that you do, because it's all good and it's all God, think about attending some of those classes. And we have a, a, a three-week class, Connecting Your Angels with Janice Hope, the Angel Lady, and also sound healing meditation. That's going to be Monday evenings from now on from 6.30 until 8 o'clock. And it begins June 10th, which is tomorrow, and the cost is $15. So if you want to explore meditation, you want to find out more about it, you want to experience it, come in here <coughs> with your fellow members and attendees and, and get, it, get it going with meditation. Tama Keeves at Seaside. She's a former Harvard law professor who left it to help people grow in their lives. And she's going to be giving a, she's going to be speaking at both the early and late service on June 30th, and she's going to be holding a class at 1 p.m. Information about that is also at the back. And now my favorite subject. What happens June 29th? What happens June 29th? Okay, this side. What happens June 29th? What happens June 29th? Happens June 29th? Ah, they got it. All right. So, if you notice when you came in, big box. We have five boxes for your donations. We're accepting donations during the week from June 9th, uh, excuse me, from tomorrow, today, during the week, from 9 to 3 o'clock, and on Sundays for the next two weeks. Well, I also need volunteers. I'll be outside getting names and telephone numbers for me to help me. But we need you to bring the stuff in because we have to price it, we have to sort it, and all of that money is going to go towards updating our live visioning stream uh, telephone, uh, telephone, television uh, system that we have. And uh, at this point, I would like to remind you that in your program is all that information I gave you, plus about 15 more events that are happening. So take them home, take a look at them. This takes hours and hours for the team, the administration team in the back to put together on a weekly basis. Put it on the icebox, refrigerator, I'm sorry, I'm old. 
Put it, put it on the refrigerator. <laughs> it's an icebox, man. I still call it an icebox, all right? Anyway, since you're all laughing, stand up. Greet your neighbor. I task you to say hello to somebody that you don't know. Icebox. Icebox. <laughs> Check. One, two. Please remain standing so we can sing together our congregational song this morning. We're singing, We Let It Be. We Let It Be. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. Let's do it again. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let. Wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let, we let the joy, the joy wash over us. We let, we let, we let it be. today, aren't we? My goodness, all washed over. Anyway, what a joy it is to be with you on this fabulous day here at Seaside, a day in which Spirit is seeking to inspire each and every one of us, and so together we get to create this, this experience that is about to unfold, so I want to welcome you. It is a place where all are welcome. It is an affirming, loving spiritual community that honors you wherever you may be on your spiritual path. It is a place where there is joy and kindness and caring. It is truly a place without judgment. It is a spiritual community that is here to love and to care. And so as we go forth into this morning, we do so with an openness and a receptivity where good is about to go on. And as I'm sitting here looking at Jackie Mayo, it has been months since I have seen you here. How fabulous to have you sitting back here at Seaside. It's, uh, it's just an inspiration, that's for sure. 
one of our uh, practitioners who just celebrated her 90th birthday. So it's, um, it's, it's big, it's significant. So. But I'll tell you what, we got another practitioner who's the head of our core of practitioners who's about to take us even a little bit deeper this morning in consciousness, and that's Kathleen Lees. Want to do some prayer here? I invite you to come together with me in the stillness and experience the presence of each of us together as one, as individuals, as spirit expressing individually, and the power of expressing those individual spirits together. Filled with joy of the music and the presence of each of those who make this, this coming together possible, we celebrate Seaside, our home, our spiritual home that we've created for ourselves so that we can do exactly what we're doing today. I'm tremendously grateful for all of you, for all that we do for all that we are able to do as a community. So knowing that this is so, I say thank you, Father, Mother, God, and so it is. It is not I, but the spirit within who does these things that come before me. It is not I, but the spirit within. Glory to God. Glory to God. It is not I, but the Spirit within who does these things that come before me he is not I but the spirit within glory to God glory to God glory
Thank you, Reverend Fran and Practitioner Kathleen Lees for beginning us in such a sacred space. Thank you. Good morning. Hello. I'm Reverend Christina Tillotson, and I get to welcome you if you're new to Seaside or if you're fairly new to Seaside. So even if you've been here forever, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here and sharing your light here with us. If you're new, just to let you know that Seaside's part of a larger organization called Centers for Spiritual Living in Golden, Colorado, and, and we're part of the New Thought Movement. So there are many, many denominations in the New Thought Movement. And what we teach is, is, is that all the ancient and modern wisdom of the world can come together and be applied to everyday life from a spiritual perspective. So thank you so, so, so much for being here. Today's about choice, the power of choice. And you might have noticed, if you've never been here before, there are lots of ministries out uh, listed in the back table, and there's all kinds of things going on that Keith told you about. So you have many, many, many choices to stay here and just experience the amazing community that is Seaside. And since I'm in charge of the Seaside Sages, I especially invite you to come to, to experience Sydney Salt talking, hopefully, with people on the other side. We will see how, how that flows um, at 1230 in the Emerson Room today. So please come and take part of that or go to the car wash or go to the singles group or whatever, whatever you are guided to do. But there are many, many ways to be in community with each other here, and there's no reason to ever be alone. Unless you want to go home and meditate and be alone with spirit, and that's, of course, you can do that too. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. We've been reading the, Dr. Christian's Joyous Living Journal every day, and today's reading is The Power of Choice. Dr. Ernest Holmes, who wrote The Science of Mind that founded this movement, says, We cannot live a choiceless life. Every day, every moment, every second, there is choice. If it were not so, we would not be individuals. And then Dr. Christian writes, Remember that you are never stuck. It only feels that way. You are always free to change your mind. You are free to take a new road, make a new decision, make a new choice. This does not mean that there won't be consequences for making a new choice, but you already know that, of course. It's only your fear or your unwillingness to be uncomfortable that keeps you stuck. You are free to express your life as uniquely as you choose. There is no prize for staying, for staying and no, no reward for going. In either case, you will learn and grow and have the opportunity to become more of yourself. The joy is, being, is in being true to who you are no matter where your choices lead you. So let's take these ideas into prayer. Making a choice to just center into spirit. Turning within to that place where I absolutely know there is only one. There is only that one life, that one power, that one bliss, that one creative energy throughout all of its creation, from the tiniest atom to the farthest galaxy. It is all what I call God. It doesn't matter what one calls it, but it is that life, that love, that, that expresses itself through and as every single being on this earth and in all other galaxies and planets. There is only God. There is no place where God not, is not as omnipresent throughout and in all of its creation. And that one is who I am right here and right now, and each beautiful one spirit here is that. as an expression of that light and that love and that wisdom and that creativity and that freedom of choice of spirit right here and right now, sitting in this room in this very sacred space. So I'm absolutely knowing that out of this sacred time together, that that sacred power of choice becomes more and more evident, and that the choices that are made out of, out of this sacred time together allow each one here to rise in, in expression of spirit, rise in that connection of knowing that there is only one, that there is only God, and that the choice can be made to just be expressions of God no matter what the rest of the world says 
And I just so gratefully, gratefully accept this power of choice, this, this sacred time together that uplifts each one here. And as I release this word to that sacred soil of the law, knowing that it is now done in perfect grace and bliss and choice. And so it is. Amen. morning. Hello, everybody. How are you? You're looking very good. I just wanted you to know that. I'm glad to see every smiling face. And you're all smiling. That is so nice. You know, when you come up here sometimes and you're talking and you see things that go on, you don't really see yourselves chewing gum and, and doing all those things. But me being the fourth and fifth grade teacher that I was, I look around for those gum chewers. I'm just, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing Hey, I have, we have somebody, a first-time guest here at Seaside, you know, and I want you to put on your special manners. Not just... <laughs> no, this lady, I'm telling you what, knocked us out the first service, and we're still here. We're tired. We're exhausted because she just was so incredibly great, and we were all just wiping our brows. This young lady is named Rita. Rita Edmund is a jazz vocalist in singing in a four-octave range. Now, it, oh, y'all know that. All those people should be in the choir. I would like to tell you that. We start in September. Okay. All right. And, and she is able to swing at any tempo. I like that. She has released two CDs, two CDs, Sketches of a Dream and A Glance at Destiny, which rose very quickly to, on the Jazz Week charts top 50 and made the number two spot on the roots of the jazz charts. Uh -huh. Number 30 spot for four weeks. Number 30 spot for four weeks. You know how hard that is to do on the jazz chart? That is something, isn't it? The, though compared, though often compared to Sarah Vaughn and Carmen McRae, Jazz Times Magazine declares that Rita Edmond brings a fresh new sound to jazz. It can't be denied. So let's support this young lady, buy her CDs, and would you please welcome to our stage first time, Rita Edmond. <laughs> Oh, once in my life, I have someone who needs me, someone I've needed for so long. For once unafraid, I can go where life leads me. I'm not alone anymore. For once I can touch what my heart used to dream of long before I knew. Oh, someone warm like you who make my dreams come true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For once in my life, I have left sorrow hurt me. Not like it's hurt me before For once I have something that I know won't desert me I'm not alone anymore For once I can say, this is mine, you can take it With the power of choice, I know I can make it For once in my life, I have someone who needs me With the power of choice For once in my life, I won't let sorrow hurt me, not like it's hurt me before. For once I have something I know won't desert me, I'm not alone anymore. For once I can say, 
This is life, you can't take it Long as I know I've got love, I can make it With the power of choice, I have someone who needs me With the power of choice Teasing us with that range, enticing me to call her back. My goodness, that is fabulous. That is Rita Edmund. Thank you. Power of choice. Oh, my goodness. That, that, they should have named the song that. That was a good one. Anyway, hey, this morning's message just happens to be the power of choice. It is amazing the way that works out sometimes. <laughs> hey, that's great. But I'll give you a heads up, really, in the direction I'm going with this morning is that you're a choice in your life, and you get to decide um, whether you're going to buy into the way of this world, or are you going to exercise your choice and go for the spiritual approach. And really, what I would suggest is it seems a lot more practical to me to choose the spiritual approach to living, to choose the mystical kind of path in life, to recognize that spirit goes before me and makes the crooked way straight, to recognize that whatever's going on in my world, the presence of God is there and that I can choose to see that because I'm at a place of choice. So no matter what is going on, I do not need to succumb to the appearances, fall prey to the headlines of this world, or listen to the CNN news that is bombarding me with what's wrong here. Because I'll tell you what's right, it is God's kingdom and it's come to manifest and I'm going to proclaim that for the world because that is my choice. That is what I'm going to live. That is what I'm going to see in this world. And so, you know, as the winds blow, the pessimist is going to complain. The optimist is going to know it's going to change. But it is the leader who will adjust their sail. And what I want you to do is be that leader in your life. And recognize that you're at choice, that you can adjust your sail no matter what is going on, whatever winds are blowing in your life and in your world. You're at choice. As you were hearing the reading this morning, is you do not need to be stuck anywhere in your life. Nowhere. You just have to be willing maybe to face the discomfort. You've got to move beyond the unwillingness to choose a new and a new kind of way. But you are always at a place of choice. You are never stuck. And if you are stuck, it's because your choice to do nothing about it. You are always at choice. And as you begin to choose, you leave those experiences and the pain that they are behind you. Mickey Rooney said, you always leave failure behind on the way to success. Rumi, a little bit deeper in his <laughs> recognition of his spiritual expression in this world, great Sufi mystic, said, you were born with wings. Why do you choose to crawl through life? You were born with wings. Why do you choose to crawl? It is your choice. You have been given the power of choice, and I'd like to suggest, once again, it seems far more practical to choose the spiritual approach to living than one that is miserable. We've got a wonderful lady coming here to Seaside to speak, Tama Keeves. I've just been devouring her books, and um, she is a uh, Harvard Law graduate who practiced in New York, big firms, in line to become one of the partners, the, you know, the big cases and all those things, and it just, it was not her, and she gave it all up to follow writing. It's like, oh my goodness, this creative expression, this artistic expression. Her mom, you know, the berserk, you know, needing therapy to overcome that. At least that's what she says. Her book, you know, Next Time I Dance, explains what she went through. And her new book is uh, Inspired and Unstoppable. And just some of her chapter titles are, you know, Ch Chase Grace, Not Guilt. I thought that was pretty good. Another chapter title is you dream big because you are big. Another one, I like this one. She says, you are a powerhouse, not a rental. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the kind of creative. And so I uh, plan to be here at the end of the month. But anyway, I wanted to share with you a line from her. She says, 
when you run into resistance, it can kill your dream. Or it can unleash your primordial power. Got that? See, you're a choice. When you run into resistance, when you run into the stuck edge, if that's a word, if you, you know, it, when you run into whatever is going on in your world that feels less than graceful, less than being in the flow, you get to unre- use it to unleash that primordial power. You get to decide, you know what, I am greater than this. You know, yesterday I had a chance to be up in Seattle and speaking to the graduating class of our ministers. Our campus is here at Seaside as well as in Seattle. And bless Reverend Catherine who threw a party last week here at Seaside. He was throwing it yesterday up there. And so I was speaking to the graduating ministers. And I said, you know, it's an interesting time. You're stepping into the ministry. It is a time where there is definitely an economic dynamic going on that some might call crisis. You know, there are wars that are going on on this planet. There are um, environmental situations. It is a great time to be a minister. But I also wanted them to be aware that when Ernest Holmes, he's the founder of this, he started in 1927, two years after he started this movement of religious science, you had the great crash of the stock market in 1921, 29. Okay. And it wasn't his fault. You know, it just, it just happened. But what he did is he brought forth a tool or a new thought and approaching it. You know, we went through the 30s, deep depression. Our parents or our grandparents will tell us all about the depression. My goodness, and we all hear about that. You can't do, leave that, or you got to use it. Or, you know, um, you know we, we, um, we were attacked in Pearl Harbor. Uh, we were fighting two wars, or, or fr- on two fronts anyway, a war in, in Europe and, and one in the Pacific. You know, we dropped an atomic bomb. You know, we had V-Day, and we had uh, V-E Day, and we had V-J Day, and, and then we had all of our uh, soldiers come back, whether physically or emotionally wounded, never the same again. And, and then, you know, we had the Korean War, and then we had... Oh, uh, the Bay of Pigs, and, then, and we had the U-2 incident, and we had the missile crisis, and, and we had President Kennedy shot, and his brother Bobby shot, and Martin Luther King shot, and we had Vietnam, and we had embassies attacked, and energy crises, and big, huge uh, inflations, and crashes, and booms, and wars in Iraq, and it's, like, and it's like, oh my goodness, there was so much, but what is important to remember in these kinds of times, or at least this is what Paul Harvey says, in these kinds of at times, it's important to remember there are always these kinds of times. That's right. So what I was telling those ministerial students is you have the power of choice as to how you want to walk through this world. You can give your power away to those wars or those depressions or those inflations or those challenges, the crises upon this planet, or you can choose the power of choice and declare and proclaim the presence of God. There was a farmer who said, you know, the hardest thing about milking cows is they don't stay milked. <laughs> yeah. The challenge with our prayers is I pray and I get this just right. You know what? And there's something else. And there's something else. And this something else is not good or bad. It is a resistance that releases a primordial power that is within my soul that allows me to practice the presence of God and spirituality in my life. I get to live a choice and not be at the effect of what is going on in the world or in my body. I get to know that I am greater than that because I am God manifesting in this world in which I walk. And so, if you you look into the mirror, and you look at the eye, and the eye that is like my name, I Christian, you know, you can look and say, you know, you're not looking too good today. (laughs) Or if you're forever in Fran, you say, you're looking good today. (laughs) You know? But the eye Christian that is looking, you know, I'm seeing a body. It's not really the eye that is me that looks through the eyes. The one that is looking through the eye sees you know, 6'2", 175 pounds, blue-eyed kind of guy. But that's not who I am. Who I am is that, that integrity, is that loyalty, is that, fidelity, in, is that fidelity, is that joy, is that honesty, is that truth, is that love expression in this world. That is who I am, and that is what he looks through there. And that is the eye of my being that is stronger than anything that this world can throw at me. That's the truth of who you are in your life. That which is looking through your eyes. 
sweat out pictures in your life and in your world. Norman Vincent Peale, in his book, The Power of the Plus Factor, he was way ahead, Simon Cowell, and <laughs> the X Factor guy. <laughs> you know? He says, he wrote in, in the book that he was walking through the twisted streets of Kowloon over in Hong Kong, and he came across a tattoo shop. And in the window of the tattoo shop was all sorts of examples of what you could have inked onto your skin. It, it, you know, it could be a flag, it could be a mermaid, it could be an anchor. I mean, you could look at Keith Russell's army if you want some examples of <laughs> possibilities there. <clears throat> As you're loading up his pods for the, his yard sale, for sure. Um, but one of the things that caught uh, Peel's, or Vince Peel's eyes was three words that said, born to lose. And he's just so shocked that he actually had to go into the store and he, he found, there's an older Chinese guy who was the artist in there, and he said, do, do people really have that tattooed on them? And the guy said, yes. And he said, but why? And in his broken English, he said, uh, and he pointed to his head, he said, the tattoo on their body after it's tattooed on their mind. It's only when it's on the mind first that it shows up on the body, on the skin, in your world of effects, on the outside. You get to decide because the world responds. You make the choice. You've been given the power of choice in your life. It doesn't matter what is going on. It's what you do with what is going on in your life. There's a guy who lived in a local neighborhood, and he, he liked working with wood on the weekends. And one day he went out to his shop and his saw was gone. And he was sure that his neighbor's kid, who likes working with wood, stole his saw. And he, any time he saw him that week, he saw that teenager, you know, that he just, he just saw the way he walked. He, he walked, he was guilty. You know, he spoke, you could hear it in his voice. You know, he couldn't look at him. There was just an attitude, a suspicion, just an aura all about this kid. Until... The next week, and the guy was down in the shop and found that his saw had fallen behind his bench that he had knocked off by mistake. And the kid never looked guilty again. <laughs> That's right. I mean, our world out pictures. We've all heard the classic uh, study that was done, double, double blind study, of, um, of a principal who calls in you know, three teachers and, and says, you guys are the best and brightest teachers we have, so I'm going to give you 90 students among the three of you who have the highest IQ in this school and that you can work with them and take them as far as they can go this year. You work with them however you want. And as we've heard this story goes, at the end of the year, those kids surpassed any other students by 20 or 30 percent. And so the principal called in the teachers, and this is the part that I really liked. He said um, that, you know, i got to share with you that I wasn't fully honest, that those kids were just randomly pulled. They weren't, they weren't the brightest kids in the school. They were just the first 90 names I, that I pulled. And then he said, I guess this is really the part I liked, is, and i got to be honest with you, you weren't the three smartest teachers here either. You were the first three names I pulled out of the hat. <laughs> and uh, it's just... You know, but why? Because there was an attitude. There was an expectation. There was a choice. And life responds to that. It's your choice. You have been given the power of choice in whatever situation you find yourself in. It's the way it works. It's how it works. Remember the comic strip Ziggy? I think he's probably still around. But anyway, there's a picture of Ziggy. He's sitting, you know, forlorn underneath the tree looking up at the moon and, and says, you know, I, I have been in and I have been out. I have been there and I have been there, here. I have been up, I have been down. I have been all around, I have been about. But no matter where I have been, it's never been there. It's never been there. Oh my, it's like I've never been where it's at. You know, poor guy, you know, it's never been there. It's never been where it's at. I've never been where it's happening. What do you think is the common denominator there, guy? It's like, come on. If you have never been where it's at, if you've never been where it's happening, where it's going on, you get to take a look at yourself because you are the one who brings it to the party. You are the one who brings it to what is going on, and the world responds. Insurance companies will tell you that about accidents. They did a study that said... Um, People who are emotionally 
distraught or upset have a 144% higher chance of being in an automobile accident. And what's even more interesting is that from the same study, one out of five fatal accidents, that one individual had been in an argument six hours or prior, somewhere within the six hours prior to that. Life responds back to us. It's true in the world. It's true in the schools, the IDs. It's true with driving. But it's also true with our body. You know, you can have like opinions, which, and you can have beliefs, and you can have convictions. Opinions are pretty light. You can change your opinion, get in discussion. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Okay, I'll change my opinion. But beliefs, they're stronger. I mean, beliefs got some emotional charge behind them. And I've got evidence and validation. I, it takes a little bit more to change that belief. But if you have got a conviction that the core of your being it is a pillar, it is a buttress, it is what holds me up, it is solid. And it will change your world in its support. And an example of that that studies show is there's been individuals who have multiple personalities. And the personalities are different. And the body changes when that new personality is leading this vehicle. That new personality is looking through the eyes. All of a sudden, the color of the eyes have, can change. Birthmarks disappear and then reappear. Genetic diseases, uh, uh, diabetes in one personality is there and entirely gone in another. Organs respond. People who haven't been able to walk can then walk. How is this possible? There is something that responds to the eye of that which is higher than this physical body. That's something that is looking through. And when that individual, that eye, that God eye, that higher eye, uses the power of choice in their life with a, with a conviction, things will change in the world. It is the way it works. Viktor Frankl, oh my goodness, here is a guy who inspired millions of people when he told his imprisoners. And here's a guy who lived through the Holocaust, saw the atrocities of the concentration camps. He told his imprisoners that it doesn't matter what you do to me, you can never take away my ability to respond to what you do to me. The last thing you can take from anyone is their ability to choose. It doesn't matter what you do. I am still at choice. It doesn't matter what this body does. I am still at choice. It doesn't matter what happened in that relationship. I am still at choice. But you've got to take the responsibility. You've got to have it at that level of the conviction that you have the power of choice. That the world is not doing it to you. I, I listen to people. You know, they don't take responsibility. They're, they're having a tough time. They say, boy, I got up on the wrong side of the bed today. Right? They have a tough time in life. I was born on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, they, they, their life's kind of flattened down and the rest of the siblings are doing good. I got born in the wrong birth order. You know? I was the middle kid or I was the youngest kid or I was the oldest kid or I was the seventh kid or whatever kid it was. The wrong birth or, or relationship. You know, it just busted up. It's like I married the wrong person. You know? Or at work, someone else got promoted. I was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. You know, all of it is blame. And there is no responsibility that is being taken here for the experience that you're having in life. You want to experience the power of your choice. You've got to take back the responsibility for what's going on in your world. And say, okay, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be responsible for this. There was someone who went to, it was one of Abraham Lincoln's advisors who went to him with a guy he was recommending for a cabinet position. And Lincoln said, well, I don't like the way his face looks. And his advisor said, excuse me, President, but his face, he can't really do anything about that. What Lincoln said is anyone after the age of 40 is responsible for what their face looks like. <laughs> Ended the conversation. You know someone who's had an attitude of joy and happiness shows up on their face after 40 years. You know a Ziggy who's been miserable where it shows up on their face after 40 years. You bet that face will show 
that eye that is in there that is looking out of the eyes if you're willing to look and to have the eyes that can see. It is there for the world to see. It is the attitude that makes a difference. The attitude is a prime thing. The attitude, you know, it can't stop your feelings, but what it can do is it can stop um, you being stopped by your feelings. It can say, you know what, I'm going to take this situation and I'm going to, to use it as a launching pad. I'm going to use the power of choice to readjust my sales. I'm going to have the attitude that, because I'll tell you, attitude is more important than your history, than your upbringing, than the busted relationship, than your education, than your talents. Your attitude is what makes the difference in your life because I got to tell you as I started this morning is I believe the practical approach to living is a spiritual one that you get to choose this mystical path because the Spirit is omnipresent, right? And the nature of God is omniscience. That is the all-knowing, all-wise, all-powerful. It didn't say somewhat. It said all powerful. That omniscience is the nature of God, and that is my nature, that is your nature, and you have the power of choice to choose that nature in the face of the resistance or the challenge or what this world is thrown at you or what your body's thrown at you or what the economy is thrown at you. You have been given the power of a new thought, a new choice. Because there have always been times like these. And you know what? And in these times that have always been there, have been those that have been thriving. There have been those that have been happy. There have been those that have filled with joy. You can choose to be one of those individuals in your life. Because that power and that presence is here with you now. Rabba was this young um, Islamic girl who who decided she was going to go to Mecca with the crowd of people that were going in the season to go experience God. And so as she walked across the rivers, the mountains, and the valleys, and the crowd began to swell, she got to the outskirts of Mecca, and the throngs of people were pushing in there, and she just stopped. And she fell to her knees. She said, God, I'm so sorry that I went looking for you here. When you came looking for me so long ago, I did not need to come here to find and experience you when you came to me so long ago. But what we have done for centuries has continued to create that sense of separation from God, that God is out there. You have the power of choice and you can choose to be that spot of that omniscient, omnipresent expression of the divine itself. You can align yourself with the Sufi mystics, the Islamic mystics, the Christian mystics, the Jewish mystics, the Buddha mystics that have always said, God, I are one. You go to heaven, there I am. You make your bed in hell, there I am. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, there I am. And you have been given the power of choice, no matter what is going on in your life, in your body, in your world, in your relationship, to choose God and dissolve that sense of separation. And when there is nothing else, then all that can be in your world is the expression of that kingdom and that presence and that life force of God and all the good and all the glory that Reverend Fran was calling us to service with. God bless you as you say yes to that divine. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring Rita back to our stage. That was wonderful, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey. Trailway, 
You can reach me on an airplane. You can reach me with your mind. You can reach me by caravan. Cross the desert like an airman. I don't care how you get here, just get here if you can. There are hills and mountains between us, always something to get over. If I had my way, surely you would be closer. I need you closer. There are hills and mountains between us Always something to get over If I had my way Surely you would be closer I need you closer You can win surfing to my life Take me up on a carpet ride You can make it in a big balloon But you better make it soon You can reach me by caravan Cross the desert like an airplane With the power of choice you can get here Right here, right now, tomorrow, today, of your lifetime with the power of choice. Whoa, get here. Oh, with the power of choice, you can get here. If you can. Thank you. Hey, hey. Thank That's you Rita. Much. Power of choice will get you there. Oh, so true. Hey, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in our givingness and the sharing of, of our love and our support. It is a time in which we get to pause and just feel how much we truly trust that presence of God and to be that activity of that trust and that love expressed. And know that as you give, it comes back. It's not why you give, but rather it's an expression of who you are. And so I invite you to listen to your heart and say yes to that. I want to invite our ushers to come forward as we do take that yes from our heart and our soul and our spirit and say thank you to this wonderful crew. Thank you to those who mail in your contributions when you cannot be here on a Sunday, as well as those that remember us with their auto tie, that regular systematic support from your world. And thank you to our online community who mails in or, or sends in their gifts. And I share this prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing that the blessings of the divine falls upon this moment in ever-increasing kinds of ways, and that each of us becomes that conduit for that infinite expression of spirit, that inexhaustible reservoir of good and abundance to flow into form. For I know right now that each of us becomes that place to which spirit dances and expresses in life, blessing and enriching our individual experience as we continue to give it access and way through our, our life. And so that which is blessed stuff as we send it forth in the world knowing that the blessing continues to touch many as it ripples out into life. So I say thank you Father, Mother God for this opportunity to become aware at a greater level the truth of my source and so it is. Amen. Together let us say our wonderful affirmation of abundance which is spirit continues to bless my world. 
Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of the greater good. That's my life now. <laughs> And just standing here in the excitement, the joy of this musical moment, I know the wonderful flow of sound and abundance truly moves for this point in time and space, for this bountiful gift that continues to increase and to expand, that has blessed all those from which it comes and has come from, is received with a good stewardship and taken care of and set forth back into action, knowing that it continues to bless individuals as it does its good work for which it's intended, excited for the good that continues to uh, grow and thrive here at Seaside, and we just move forth with appreciation for the love expressed, and so it is. Amen. So it is. All right. Thank you, Cindy. Cindy, she's your board secretary, so just appreciate <laughs> Hey, great job, guys. Way to rock the house, man. They are fabulous, Seaside band. Rita, you are fabulous. It's about time you found us. You know, you got to come back. You were teasing me with that four octave range. You got to let it go next time. And so we just rocked the house. Reverend Fran, what a joy it is to have you orchestrate our wonderful artistic expression. <laughs> Dr. Christina, a joy to share Sundays with you. Bless you. <laughs> giving us sound today is Chris. Good job. And giving us the visuals today is Marv. Know that there are CDs available right after the service if you would like to pick one up. But if you're watching it live, we love you at home. Thank you, Timothy, for sharing this with the world. 26,000 people have watched in the last two years. So great job, Tim. Way to keep it going. Lots going on at Seaside today. I mean, I could tell you about the car wash. And the, the kids, we're trying to send them to camp. Or the, or the family ministry that's going on after the service. Or the sages that are going on after the service. Or the singles that are going on after the service. Or the silver uh, circle club that's going on after the service. But what's going on right now is I'm about to do the third course of the four-course meal I've been cooking for you. And so I want to invite out to the stage uh, Carl, who's got my goodies. And so... As you've been experiencing my Italian flair, not quite what the Sylvester's did last year, but you know, last you know, two weeks ago you had the gazpacho soup, then uh, last week you had the fresh Caesar dressing and salad I made for all of you, and this week the third course, the main course of it all, happens to be a uh, pesto dried tomato pasta. Of course, the pasta is gluten free, made with corn, probably GMOs, but I'd hope not. But um, it gets tougher to find corn these days. But anyway, so I don't know if I can keep this up quick enough for us, but I'm going to give it a shot here. 
I sh- probably should have been, um, is that good? Okay. Probably should have been sauteing all the vegetables a little bit earlier, but you start with a good quality olive oil. I mean, it can't be any better than the quality of the oil you got. So you put a little bit of oil in there and um, onions. I got a sweet onion going on here. So it's not just your basic bitter kind of thing. This is a fancy, fancy onion that they made me lock up in the back room because it had aroma that was a little bit too much. Some nice organic peppers with a little bit of color here. And let's see there. Uh, okay, we got the garlic. What is Italian without garlic going on, right? We got to do that right. So, Jay, didn't you say more garlic, Italian the better? Just get, get it all. So Jay's our, our chef. Is that about right? More. Yeah, you, you need glasses, but okay. If it's too garlicky, our Epicurean master. Blame him. But anyway, so you got you know, try to get this sauteed. I'm, I'm like stalling so it cooks a little bit. So I don't know if you're going to eat it raw, but how hot's that? Maybe a little hotter. Yeah, well, okay. Anyway, salt. Got to be fresh. Pepper. Let's see the... Uh, Got a main ingredient. We've got the pesto here. A lot of pesto. Can't go wrong with basil, right? And the dried tomatoes, like the olive oil in there. That's good. Little olives. Stir this up. See what we get. Not cooking quite as fast as the first service. They're good cookers, man. There, let's fire up this one. There we go. Yeah, stick with the first one. Just stall. Okay, so here we go. Here is that. Gluten-free pasta I was telling you about. I was up at 3 o'clock this morning getting it right for all of you. And uh, chopping the peppers, the onions. How's it smelling? Yeah? Okay. Let's see here. Okay. A little bit of cheese. Now, Reverend Tammy gave me instructions after last week. I need to be a little bit more respectful with my uh, cheese grating. Uh, so notice how I am. I wasn't allowed to use the cheese that fell on the floor last week either. This would have been another good thing to do at 3 o'clock in the morning. All right, some good fresh Parmesan. Stir this up. Hey, it's actually working, guys. If you could see how beautiful this is looking. There we go. I don't know. Should I go another minute? Or should I keep stirring as I pray? <laughs> I assure you, I pray when I cook. And no one is dying. Okay, who wants to try it this morning? Okay, all right, we got one. Last week, you know, all you guys... Um, Took salad? I mean, what kids eat salad? Okay, what do you think? All right. Yeah! There you go. Tell you what, we will send this in the back. Go to Gourmets for God. Sign up for your wonderful meals that are going on. And um, the band was upset they didn't get any at first service. So you can give them a little bit. Okay. What I want to do now is pray. <laughs> so, hey, you guys know there's at least one meal I can cook. <laughs> so I won't starve. You know, when I first came to town, did I tell you, the way I ate is I, other than the frozen waffles, 
I, I would go to people's houses because they always invited the minister over for dinner. So uh, you know, I was 30 and hungry. So anyway, I have since learned how to cook. <clears throat> but um, I want to invite any of our religious science practitioners that are here to please stand. And um, just invite all of us to feel this upliftment of life force and energy and the vibrancy of spirit for truly the blessings of God is moving in this moment. I sense it and feel it and know that my choice and the power of my choice is that practical application of the spiritual awareness where any sense of separation is dissolved and I stand united with the truth of who I am, which is God, and I am God expressing in this moment the highest level in which I can see. Not the eye that is Christian, but that divine eye, that one that is filled with the light and the love. The, the, the beauty, the strength, the integrity. For truly the blessings of God moves right here in ways that are so right and it, it personalizes its touch in this moment. And I know that each and every one that is present here today that might have something in life or in the experience in the human incarnation that is less than graceful, that is an experience, that is a challenge, a discomfort, dis-ease. It's the physical experience but it is not the spiritual truth and it is in this moment I choose the power. I choose the power. The one and only, omnipresent, omniscient, all-knowing, infinite life force that knows how to show and express in ways that are right, real, and relevant in our individual lives. If we know anybody who's near and dear to our heart that is experiencing difficulty in their life, in their body, in their world of affairs, lift them into this divine vibration of love and this open heart of this caring and this conscious awareness of the presence of God where there is no otherness and know that it is in this light, it is in this place, there can be nothing of this world that remains that is less than that wonderful expression that is alignment of God itself and it is in this movement of spirit comes the abundance, comes the affluent flow, is the prosperity, is the joy, is the healthy body, is the perfect mobility, is the ability to see as God sees that right-sightedness of God has its way in this moment. And I know that the attitude that I choose to exercise from this moment forward is God-ordained. And life responds. Surveys and statistics and insurance averages substantiates the responsiveness to that innate conviction that is unshakable, that houses itself. Form follows consciousness, and the consciousness of this moment is God personalizing its touch. Say yes, for it's in this yes moment that I am filled with gratitude for the good that is, for the light that is, for this growing, thriving spiritual community known as Seaside that cares, this affirming, spiritual community that loves and reaches out and invites those who are searching and can be fed by our unique offerings to somehow be able to find for there's so much room here at Seaside for our spiritual family for the call has been put forth and the growth is happening the life is happening all of us are needed and I'm so grateful for the participation and the action and the life force that unfolds in this moment. I just, and I let go to this with a trust, with a belief, with that unshakable conviction, with, a, with a, uh, a knowledge that is just grounded and rooted in spirit itself. So I let go and I trust where spirit leads. And know that where it does, it allows each of us to be the contributor to the emerging consciousness upon this planet for greater good. And so it is. Amen. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I did not know the love of God was at hand But now I can say if you are discouraged and trying to make it through just one more day, you got to let it go. What we have to say, come on, I release and I let go. 
I let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes I'm only here for God you know there's no more struggle no more strife with my faith I see the light I am free in the spirit yes I'm only here for God you know that I release and I let go I let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes I'm only here for God you know there's no more struggle no more strife with my faith I see the light I am Yes, I'm only here for God. She said, take one now. You know there's no more struggle, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free. Yes, I'm only for God. Amen. Great job. Hey, our affirmation is I walk confidently through the changes in my life together. I walk confidently through the changes in my life. Oh, come on, like you mean it. I walk confidently through the changes in my life. And now that we know it, one more time. I walk confidently through the changes in my life. And our song of grace. I'm living in love. I'm living in peace. I'm living my life for what I believe to joys and through fears in this world I walk God's grace shines on me well it shines on us all we are living in grace we are living in grace we are living in We're living in love, we're living in peace. United we stand as one family. We honor all truth as together we walk. God's grace moves through me and it moves through us all. We are living in grace. 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 Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you.